Welcome everyone. Today we are going to talk about T.S. Eliot, Thomas Dunn's Eliot, Nobel Laureate, 1948. Eliot is one of the most important writer if we look at him from UGC perspective. At least one or maximum two questions are expected. These two questions are important for UGC net as we know. One question or two question can change the perspective. Either we can crack UGC net with it or GRF. Thus, the value of T.S. Eliot cannot be denied. And reading it from UGC perspective, making it more interesting, what to read, how to read, what to left and what not to left. These are the things. So connecting all the matter at one place, I am bringing some topic for you that will be important and can help you to gain certain marks. And uh, this is uh, what we are going to start our presentation, T.S. Eliot, prepared by me, Deepak, Assistant Professor, Mahatma Gandhi Central University, Bihar. And uh, this is uh, what we are going with the first slide. And uh, as the name shows, T.S. Eliot. Sometime in UGC net question asked, what is the complete or full name of T.S. Eliot? And then options are given. Students check everything, but do not go with this uh, Thomas Turns Iliad. And uh, that is why sometimes mistake happen. And in case of uh, his birth, uh, that is uh, 1888 or 1888. We have to remember that in the same year, Matthew Arnold dies. And uh, that is how we can say once the older era, older critic Matthew Arnold dies, and then the birth of T.S. Iliad. And uh, second important thing is the prize, Nobel Prize for Literature, T.S. Eliot received in the year 1948. Sometime question is asked and we forget and it is just one year after India's independence, 1948. Uh, that uh, is uh, his uh, perspective, uh, uh, a biographical detail, smaller in uh, terms, but uh, these are the things that we have to remember in case of T.S. Eliot, biographical, other things are not asked in UGC net. So we are not going to cover on that. And the second slide that we are going with the most famous poem, The Waste Land. And uh, this is the poem that uh, make reputation of uh, T.S. Eliot in literary world. In case of publication, it published in the 1922. It first published in the magazine Criterion and uh, later in Dial. Eliot cited two works from which he drew inspiration to create poem symbolism, and uh, that is Jesse L. Watson's Ritual to Romance and uh, James Frazier's The Golden Bow, A Study in the Magic Realism. These uh, two books remain the source of most of the symbols uh, for uh, T.S. Eliot. If we go with the original title, The Wasteland was not the original title, in fact, the original was uh, he do the police in different vices. It is a phrase uh, from Charles Dickens' famous novel, Our Mutual Friend. In case of structure, if we talk about the poem is divided into five parts. And these are the burial of the dead, a game of chess, the fire sermon, death by water, and finally, what the thunder said. These five questions are asked uh, these five points are asked in UGC in separate way and uh, they ask you to establish them in a chronology. So all point you have to put in chronology and uh, it is for two more marks and mostly students remember that there are five parts but they do not know which part come first or which last. So what the thunder say is mostly last and how to remember the burial of the dead and uh, that is first then the chest then uh, fire sermon and water so fire and water are two things death by water is the only uh, point we uh, smaller the smallest poem we can remember and what the thunder say is the last one and uh, in case of dedication the poem is dedicated to Isra Pound and uh, uh, Eliot tried to show it from two quotations and uh, both Eliot is quoting both a uh, line of 117 of Canto 26 of Dante's Purgatorio and the second Cantica of the Divine Comedy, where Dante defined the troubadour are not Daniel as the best smith of the mother tongue, and also 
same thing is used by Ili, uh, Pound, Isra Pound, in the title of chapter two of his uh, Spirit of Romance, 1910, where he translated the phrase as the better craftsman. So Lee Morgan Fabro is the, the better craftsman or the best myth of the mother tongue, whatever the point you want, you can use it. And the famous mythical character that we have seen in this small poem is Madame Sosos Trees, Carthay's Philomel. Uh, Sometimes question is asked, uh, I think two or three times such type of question appear in that uh, poem. And uh, the first section and third section of the poem, that is Burial of the Dead and the Fire Sermon, having the word unreal city. And this unreal city is none other than London. So it is also asked, what is the unreal city in the wasteland? And that is London. And the uh, very opening and the most famous line that we all know, April is the trillest man when the lil lilacs out of the dead land. And the ending uh, is more Indian, the Santi, Santi, Santi. And uh, these uh, are uh, many times asked opening and ending of the poem. And uh, if we go with the sources of the poem, then uh, Iliad is uh, using source from Homer, Sophocles, Petronius, Virgil, Ovid, Augustine, and Dante Alighieri. In case of writers uh, that are classical writer, if we go with the modern uh, writers, then we are having William Shakespeare, Edmund Spencer, Gerard Dinarval, Thomas Kidd, Geoffrey Chaucer, Thomas Middleton, John Webster, Joseph Conard, John Milton, Andrew Marvel, Charles Budala, Richard Wagner, Oliver Goldsmith, Herman Hesse, Atlas Huxley, Paul Verley, Walt Whitman, and Bram Stoker. These are frequently used writer and several lines are taken from them and uh, in case of scriptural writing, uh, we are having Bible, especially the Book of Common Prayer, and from Hindu, Bhadranayak Upanishad, and uh, as uh, the important Buddha's fire sermon. Apart from this, the cultural and anthropological study of James Frazier, the Golden Bow, and Jesse Westerns from ritual to romance are also used, as uh, we have talk about Frazier's and uh, Weston's work earlier. If we go with the original title, the original title refers to a myth from ritual to romance in Weston describes a, king, uh, describes a kingdom of Fisher King and his quest to get reproductive power through several tasks or tribes. This ancient myth was basis of various other quests, including Christian's quest for Holy Grail. The poem, is preceded by a Latin and Greek epigraph from chapter 48 of Centrion of Petronius. Many time Greek epigraph is asked uh, from where it is taken or sometime uh, title from where it is taken, uh, the importance of Holy Grail, Bible, Joseph Conard, so, uh, Homer, Sophocles, William Shakespeare, and so on. So these uh, are important things uh, that we have to remember from the poem, The Wasteland, and uh, now we are moving to other work. That is the uh, love song of J. Alfred Prufo, sometime also called the love song of Alfred J. Prufo, or sometimes similarly Prufo only. The poem published in 1915 in Poetry, a magazine of words at the instigation of Isra Pound. Isra Pound is the uh, guardian, uh, literary guardian of P.S. Eliot, hence uh, poem uh, that uh, previous poem, The Wasteland is dedicated to him. And the poem, uh, if in case of that, the structure of the poem, Love Song of J. Alfred Prufok is uh, from uh, Dante Allegri's uh, and it also has several references from Bible. It also include references from William Shakespeare's Henry Play Part Two and Twelfth Night and Hamlet. So, Three parts of William Shakespeare are used, and the uh, question can be asked which part of William, uh, which play, or which thing of uh, Shakespeare is not uh, part of uh, Alfred J. Prufok, and uh, they can give you three examples of these and one extra. And uh, it also includes poetry of 17th century metaphysical poet Andrew Marvel and some other French symbolists. The poem is having stream of consciousness tracking. And uh, 
this uh, longer poem can be called a drama of literary anguish or a dramatic interior monologue. The poem uh, is uh, having two, uh, two epigraphs. One was for draft and one was for the published version. The first uh, for draft version is taken from Dante's Purgatio 16, page 147 and 8. However, original in the original version, Iliad did not take Dante's Purgatio, but rather choose his Inferno, that is uh, again 27, page 61 and 62. And speaker of this ironic monologue is a modern urban man who, like many of its kind, feel isolated and incapable of decisive action. Irony is apparent from the title, for this is not conventional love poem. Prafok would be like to speak of a love to a woman, but he doesn't dare. The poem opens with a quoted passage from Dante's Inferno, suggesting that Prafok is one of the damned and that he speaks only because he is sure no one will listen. Since the reader is overhearing his thought, the poem seems at first rather incoherent. But Prufok repeats certain phrases and returns to certain sort of ideas as the poem proposes. The you and I, the opening line includes the reader, suggesting that only by accompanying Prufok one can understand his problem. So this uh, pro uh, that phrase, opening phrase, you and I is also important and asked in can be asked in exam. The next is four quartet. The four quartets are uh, a single book, but uh, most of his poems are uh, separately published. In uh, Originally, that uh, four quartets published in 1943, although the poems are separate, and uh, the first poem, that is Burnt Nurgen, published in 1936, and the uh, poem begins with two epigraph, epigraphs taken from Fragment of Heracles. The second one is East Coker, 1940, The Dry Salvages, 1941, Little Gidding, 1942. Again, uh, like uh, five part of uh, the Westland, these four parts can also be given and students have to arrange them in chronology. So chronology plays an important part in UGC net. Several questions are asked and uh, it can also be from four quartet. I think one or two times the question is asked. So Bernard, uh, First, East Coker, second, Dry Salvage, third, and Little Giddings, fourth. Each poem, uh, either it is Burn Norton, East Coker, Dry Salvage, Little Giddings, have five sets. The earlier poem connect with the later poem, and uh, finally, Little Giddings synthesizes the theme of the earlier poem within itself. The next one is The Murder in Cathedral. It is again one of the most important work of uh, William, uh, sorry, uh, T.S. Eliot and uh, published in the year 1935. It speaks about the assassination of Archbishop Thomas Beckett in Canterbury Cathedral during the reign of Henry II in 1170. The poem is divided into two parts. Part one, take place in Archbishop Thomas Beckett's Hall on December 11, 17. Second take place in Archbishop Hall and in the Cathedral, December 29, 11, 17. And this way, the whole poem question can be asked uh, uh, murder about the, whose murder take place in the Cathedral and it is uh, Thomas Beckett. Next, Metaphysical Poet, uh, one of the most important essay of uh, T.S. Eliot and uh, this association of the sensibility term refers uh, in this uh, here, the, it means uh, the way in which intellectual thought was separated from the experience of feeling in the 17th century poetry. Poet in the 18th century lacked unification of sensibility, it is claim of uh, T.S. Eliot and uh, the, it said 18th century poet intellectuals, uh, though did not feel, uh, which means uh, they see but did not feel. However, the claim of uh, Eliot is that a romantic poet felt but did not think. And the Victorian poets medit 
poetically but cannot express it till 20th century modern poets similar to the metaphysic poet and they use conceit bound to be difficult and uh, this is the metaphysics poetry and uh, the root take us to John Donne, John Donne and others and uh, the way they write uh, using wit, similes, uh, conceit, metaphor and other things to describe their poem and uh, this is how uh, that uh, Eliot used it in the metaphysical poet and the most important term here, the disassociation of sensibility. Another important essay is the tradition and the individual talent, again written in 1919, published 1920. And the essay is divided into three parts. For the concept of tradition, second, the theory of impersonal poetry, and finally, the conclusion. Eliot separated the concept of tradition, which reflect his reaction against romantic subjectivism, emotionalism. He signifies the importance of tradition. He opines the tradition gives the reader something new, something asserting, something intellect, and something vital for literary concepts. Originally, of a poet not inventing anything new or different from his predecessor. Great European tradition flowing from Homer, Shakespeare, and Dante to modern time, or you can say we are taking things from them, and they are the real classics. Poets should permit this great tradition to assert itself on his poem. The poem should be a reaction and the development of what his predecessors have created. Negative impact, distress, novelty, originality, discourages individual attempts. Eliot maintains that tradition is bound up with the historical sense, which is a perception that the past is not something lost and invented. Tradition is a living culture which is inherited from the past and also has an important functioning in the forming or shaping the present. And uh, if we go about the important quotation of about the classical writers that are about uh, Shakespeare, Dante, Homer, that is uh, dead writers are remote from us because we know more than that. Again, the theory of impersonality, again, part of that uh, uh, tradition and individual talent, uh, the concept of impersonal relation between man as a poet and man as a general man. It rejects the romantic, romantic subjective theory of poetic creation like Wordsworth and so on. It is also again the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings which Wordsworth was talking. Two aspects of impersonal theory that matter of tradition and creative process. The next uh, important uh, essay is Hamlet and his problem written in 1919 again and published in Sacred Wood Essay on Poetry and Criticism 1920. Here Eliot used the phrase objective correlative. T.S. Eliot used this phrase to describe a set of objects, a situation, a chain of events, which shall be the formula of a particular emotion that the poet feels and hopes to evoke in the reader. There must be a positive connection between the emotion of poet is trying to express and the object, image, situation in the poem that helps to convey the emotion to the reader. Eliot determined that Shakespeare's play Hamlet was an artistic failure because Hamlet's intense emotion overwhelmed the other attempt to express them through an objective correlate. Eliot felt that Shakespeare was unable to provoke the audience to feel as Prince Hamlet did through images, accent, character, and instead only inadequately describe his emotion state through the play's dialogue. Eliot's theory of objective Correlative is closely uh, related to imagist movement, also to the new criticism. In case of this, uh, the play Hamlet and his problem, it can be asked uh, about the phrase artistic failure. Who said Hamlet was artistic failure? That uh, T.S. Eliot uh, or the essay named Hamlet and his problem. Sometimes it can be asked, artistic failure is associated with the play of uh, William Shakespeare and the four options can be given. And uh, this uh, is what we have uh, in uh, our uh, lecture of today that is uh, about T.S. Eliot, the importance of uh, T.S. Eliot cannot be denied from UGC perspective. 
And if we are going to crack UGCNET, we have to read T.S. Eliot and cannot be avoided. Time is slow slowly moving and uh, only few days are left for to appear but uh, if uh, we read very systematically uh, writer by writer then it would be interesting to cover up things at least a T.S. Eliot and uh, uh, getting one question and two questions can gain two to four marks and uh, it could be helpful for us to crack mm -hmm. our exam and if you like uh, this video you can subscribe to our channel and uh, like the video comment and share and uh, with this, uh, I will say thank, thank you, stay connected, be happy, best of luck.